what's going on guys it's ETA Prime back here again today we're gonna to be taking a look at the newest build of Android for the Raspberry Pi 4 now this is actually running on the Raspberry Pi 400 but it'll also work on the Pi 4 this is the new lineage 18.1 build from Constacang and I've actually covered a lot of his Android builds and I've also personally tested out a lot of different Android builds for the Raspberry Pi 3 all the way up to the Pi 4 and I gotta say this is actually one of the best performing builds that I've come across so far so as you can see on screen now, I have the Raspberry Pi 400 hooked up to this touchscreen monitor. It does work over USB, and with Android, it is fully supported. With this build of Lineage 18.1 for the Pi 400 or the Raspberry Pi 4, there is a section in here for specific Raspberry Pi settings. And there's a few other settings in here to enable different accessories for the Raspberry Pi 4, like RTC or even a gyroscope, like a hat with a gyroscope should work with the Raspberry Pi 4. Now this video isn't an install video, this is just going to be showing it off. It's actually pretty easy to install, and my good buddy Lee PSP Video over here on YouTube just did a full installation tutorial. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. But I wanted to make this video just to show off the performance and how Android is coming along on the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Pi 400. There's a lot of stuff that's working with this build of Android 11 for the Raspberry Pi 4, but there are a few things that have a couple issues. Like, the main thing, in my opinion, is no hardware acceleration for video playback. But for V3D, 3D graphics, games, and things like that, we do have acceleration. So if you want to play a game, it will use the Raspberry Pi's GPU to do that. But when it comes to video playback, it's all going to be software-based. But in my experience, it actually does great with 1080p 30 playback. But once you hit that 60fps threshold with 1080p video, it does slow down a bit. If you want to do 720p 60, it also works really well. So what I'm going to do now is actually connect this to my game capture. We're going to test out some native Android games, some video playback, I'm going to run some benchmarks, and I'm also going to throw in a few emulators. Alright, so here we are. Android 11 running on the Raspberry Pi 400 also works on the Raspberry Pi 4, so we're actually working with 4 gigs of RAM with this unit here. I do have Google Play installed. It doesn't come pre-installed with the build, but it's pretty simple to install it. They've actually made it a lot easier with these newer builds. Let's go over to IDA64 real quick, just give you a look at this. As you can see, we're on that Raspberry Pi 4. We have 4 gigs of RAM. I do have this overclocked to 2.3 gigahertz. From the settings, you can choose up to 2 gigahertz, but I did this manually. We're working with that Broadcom GPU, and it will do up to OpenGL ES 3.1. And the build of Android here, Android 11, and a security patch from December 5th, 2020. So since I have Google Play installed here and Google services, we can use all of the Google apps with no issues whatsoever. I'm going to head over to YouTube, and from here, we're just going to check out a video. And like I mentioned, uh, this will do 720, 60 really well. So we're at 720, 60. I'm going to go full screen with it. I mean, it plays really smooth here. But if I was to go up to 1080, you'll notice it slowed down quite a bit. I mean, it seems like a dramatic jump here. Go back a little bit, just to rebuffer it out at 1080p 60. As you can see, we got a lot of slowdown. But at 720p 60, it works great, and it will also handle 1080 30 or 24. So video playback from YouTube really isn't bad on this build either. I was able to run a few benchmarks, and surprisingly enough, I was able to finish all of the benchmarks that I uh, wanted to test here. And with OpenGL, I mean, we definitely scored really low on the spectrum here. 158. This is on par with the Amazon Fire tablets, the Fire 7, and things like that. Another one I was also able to finish up was Geekbench 5. And I actually ran this twice. One at 2 gigahertz. We got a single core of 208 and multi of 536. And the next one I ran at was at this 2.3 gigahertz overclock, 276 and 765. So it definitely made a difference going up those 300 megahertz. Now in real world performance, I don't think you'll notice much from 2 gigahertz to 2.3. But I still wanted to get the most out of the Raspberry Pi 400 as I could with this build of Android. Moving over to some native Android gaming. First up, we have Minecraft. 
It's definitely not the best that I've seen. I mean, this would be playable, but we're not running even close to 60. If I had to guess, we're sitting around 20 FPS with this one. Was really hoping we'd get a little better out of this one, but unfortunately, this is the kind of performance I'm pulling out of this game at 2.3 gigahertz. But when it comes to games like Real Racing 3, as you can see, performance is really great here. And this game has been on the Google Play Store for a while. It's very well optimized. It does work on low-end chips. But to see this kind of performance out of a 3D game on the Raspberry Pi 4 running Android is still pretty impressive. And finally, we have the Android version of Dead Cells. This is actually one of my favorite games that I play on PC, but it's also available on iOS and Android, so I figured I'd test it here. And while it's not running at a constant 30 or 60, I'd still say that this is playable. It's just pretty cool to see this game running well on a Raspberry Pi 4. Now we're going to move over to a little bit of emulation, starting out with N64. I'm using Mupin64 plus FZ from the Google Play Store. We have Diddy Kong Racing, and as you can see for this lower end stuff, it's going to run great on the Raspberry Pi 4 using this build of Android. And even some of the harder to run N64 games like GoldenEye 007, work a lot better here than it does in something else like a Linux build or a RetroPie, in my opinion. I've personally always had really good luck with N64 on the Raspberry Pi while running Android, even with the Raspberry Pi 3. Next up, we have some PSP using PPSSPP, using the OpenGL backend. I mean, that's all we have access to in this build of Android. 1x resolution, we have Tekken 6. It's running at full speed. I don't have any hacks on or frame skip with this one, but the harder to run games like Chains of Olympus, Midnight Club Dub Edition, Ghosts of Sparta will require frame skip. And here's a quick look at Chains of Olympus. We're at 1x resolution. I do have frame skip set to 1. And we're running this at 30 FPS. You see it dip down a little bit, but without frame skip on, it's pretty much an unplayable experience. It's just all over the place. At least when we turn frame skip on, we can get this to sit around 30 FPS, and it's much more playable like this. But if I absolutely had to play this game on the Pi 4 like it is right now, I would turn it on. So yeah, this is definitely the best build of Android that I've tested for any Raspberry Pi 4 so far. It's only getting better over time, and hopefully in the near future we do get hardware video acceleration and things like that. There's not a lot missing from this build here. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Ethernet, all that works. But would I go out and buy a Raspberry Pi 4 or a Pi 400 specifically for Android? Definitely not. This is just kind of a side perk. It's something else that we can mess around with on our Raspberry Pi 4s or Pi 400s, but I wouldn't use this as my everyday operating system. I just think it's really cool to see Android running on these single board computers, and maybe in the future we will get a super stable build. But until then, I know that this is the best one that I've tested so far, and I'm sure more will come. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Big shout out to Constakang for getting all this together for us. And like I mentioned, if you're interested in a tutorial video on how to get this set up on your Raspberry Pi, I will leave a link to Lee PSP's YouTube channel in the description. But that's it for this one. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Pi 400, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.